Staminus is under attack, Malvertising hits thousands, and open source router firmware is officially going bye-bye. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for March 16, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, patrons, be on the lookout for a new security episode by Darren Kitchen this month. It will be on the Patreon feed by the end of the month. And of course, if you want early access to extras, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash threatwire. On to the news, this one being about malware. Now, while I am totally down to not block ads on sites that I like to support, also thank you for your support, sometimes there's a really good reason to just block all the things. Enter Angler and Rig, a couple of toolkits that started pushing malicious banner ads through an ad network that was compromised. This exploit is called malvertising, which happens when malicious code is injected into a legit online ad network or web page. In this case, reported by malware bytes, two domains bought in late February and four ad networks from Google, AppNexus, AOL, and Rubicon were the culprits serving up malicious ads to legit sites such as MSN.com, BBC, Xfinity.com, and even more. Trend Micro has reported that the campaign may have affected tens of thousands of users in the past 24 hours alone as of March 14th. When a user visits an infected site, the ads redirect them to a Trojan file and a piece of ransomware, which both get downloaded to their computer. To keep yourself safe from malvertising, a user can block ads and uninstall Adobe Flash, Java, and Microsoft Silverlight since Angular targets those third-party add-ons. Also, make sure your browser is up to date and 64-bit, not 32. If you've ever bought a TP-Link router for your network, you are probably aware of the fact that you could install open source router firmware on the device, be it OpenWRT, DDWRT, etc., 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 and that these firmware options could remove clunky router GUIs that came pre-installed on the devices, not to mention probably help you with security. Now, the FCC has passed their new regulation stating that hardware manufacturers need to block the ability for users to install third-party firmware that could allow them to change RF parameters such as country codes, frequency limits, and output power. However, open source firmware is still allowed in general if the hardware manufacturers put some sort of controls in place for these parameters. Now, because of the new regulations, TP-Link has officially complied with the FCC in public statements made on their website regarding any routers made after June 2, 2016. TP-Link is the first router manufacturer to issue a statement about the FCC rulings. So, this ruling was passed due to the FAA finding some interfering equipment being used at and around airports, which affected their terrestrial Doppler weather radar systems. So, the FAA pushed the FCC to update governing rules, which all router manufacturers in the U.S. have to comply with. Now, with so many router manufacturers not pushing updates as quickly as they should, or completely ignoring older devices until we are forced to upgrade to keep our home network secure, this is definitely a law that we need to discuss. If only phone carriers and router makers were more keen on keeping their products up to date within this fast-paced time of security flaws and privacy issues, but that seems to be only a dream. Maybe they should take a note from open source firmware creators. Hmm, I would. Tips when running a security company. Yeah, that was the headline of a hacker easing from the attacker of a security company whose websites and servers went down this weekend. Staminus, marketed as a hosting and DDoS protection company, posted on their social networks that they had experienced an outage due to a, quote, rare event, unquote, but not necessarily stating that it was due to an attack on their servers. So later, a data dump of information pertaining to their customers was made public with names, email addresses, database, routing tables, and a lot more. Now, According to the dump, the company was storing credit cards in plain text, but that hasn't been confirmed. Now, if plain text credit cards were stored by a security company, it's not only a huge failure of trust, but also a violation of PCI compliance, which can come with some crazy hefty fees from credit card companies like Visa and MasterCard. Staminus hasn't provided much of a clear public response about the breach on their platforms as of time of recording, which has really disappointed many of their users, but servers do appear to be back online. Now, early access to show summaries, behind the scenes pictures, Darren's security videos, it's all available for patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Plus, 
And this is a big plus because we're getting close and we're really excited to be able to afford it. When we hit our next go goal, we'll be able to afford an RSS feed. And that's going to be huge. We're really, really excited about that. So you can download the episodes. Of course, if you are already a patron, thank you so much. Our show is independent. It's ad free because of your help. And if you are a Hush Puppy contributor, send us your pictures. We love the little furry friends. They're super, super, super cute, and I apologize about my voice today. I've, I lost my voice over the weekend, so sorry about that. But I love seeing your pets. They bring me very, very much happiness. <laughs> and of course, you can find all of our episodes. You can find links to our show notes, uh, social networks, and everything else over at ThreatWire.net. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.